Hi, I'm Mike, and I'm standing six miles away from the main part of the ranch. This is the very corner, the farthest you can get away and still be on our land. Today, we're gonna to take a drive back, chit chat along the way and talk about what's going on around here and try to give you a scope of what we deal with on our Wyoming life. Hi there, welcome back. Thanks for joining us once again in the 30 in 30, that's 30 vlogs in 30 days right here on Our Wyoming Life. Uh, it's, uh, it's a very, very windy day today on the ranch. Uh, winds gusting 40 to 50 miles an hour. And days like this really, really take it out of me. Like I can deal with cold weather, I can deal with hot weather, uh, but uh, the snow, rain, whatever you may throw at me. But man, this wind, when it's blowing like this, will really take it out of you. We have lots of projects, plans, lots of stuff that needs to get done on the ranch, but most of it is outdoors. And fixing a fence or doing anything like that, uh, when it can wait until tomorrow, and not be done today is definitely a preferable option. On a normal week on the ranch where we're making videos for our Wyoming life and all this good stuff, uh, today would be a day where I would not be filming. I just can't work outside. Uh, yeah, I can work inside, but really, you know, how, who wants to work inside in this kind of weather? So what I decided to do was drive all the way back here. I drove all the way back to what I'm guessing, and I, and I haven't done any measuring or anything like that, is the farthest that I can be away from the shop, the main part of the ranch, uh, and still be on the ranch. I'm about six and a half miles away. I'm at a very corner post, and here you can see that that corner post right there is the very corner of the ranch. There are cows over here, there's calves. They're not ours. <laughs> Those are the neighbors. Our closest neighbor on this side, uh, they live, you can't even see their house. It's back up over that hill. So what my thought was is to be able to, uh, to, to give you a trip back on the ranch to, uh, to drive back with me and kind of try to get a scope of how big the ranch is. It's our biggest obstacle that we deal with a lot of times when we're making videos is being able to convey to people uh, how much land you have to deal with. When we first came here, it blew me away. I, like, I, I don't even remember the first time I was ever up in this corner, but we had probably been on the ranch for two or three years before I was ever even this far into it. Now, I'd like to think that I've explored every single nook and cranny of the ranch but I'm sure there's spots that I've that I've missed as well. So we're going to drive back, uh, chit chat a little bit along the way. I'm going to show you a few of the high high points and and a few other things that I that catch my eye as we're driving along, and uh, hopefully uh, you can learn something along the way. If not, at least it'll be somewhat entertaining. So well, let's go. I'm taking pretty much a straight line as far as I can uh, directly back towards the shop. And I know I've really, over the over the years, I've tried to uh, convey how large the ranch is. It's, it's over 5,000 acres. Um, and I don't know how many football fields that equates to. In a normal video, I might know because I might have done the research ahead of time. But in our vlogs, these are very much fly by the seat of your pants type videos. So uh, I really don't know how many football fields you could fit or how many, uh, you know, city blocks or whatever it may be that would help uh, convey how big this is. But when we first came here, like I said, I mean, it, it was mind boggling large because I had never ever been, been in an area that had this much space where you could look out over the horizon and every single hill that you came over and you could see the horizon, you're still on our property, you're still on the ranch, and it's very, very hard to uh, to sometimes wrap your mind around. Right now, we are back in what we call summer pasture. This is where the cows 
will come down starting in about July. They'll come down here maybe uh, towards the middle of July, maybe the end of July, depending on how grass looks and what, what our uh, grass situation looks like for the year. But they will spend uh, August, September, and most of October uh, down in this area, if not more. Uh, and this is pretty much wide open. There's thousands of acres down here that's not really fenced off. There are some some fences, but they're not really like fences to fence off pastures, you know what I'm saying? There's uh, uh, just a wide area where anything really goes. It's kind of like this is the uh, the battle royale of the ranch because there's when they're down here for the summer, this is their playground. This is where they live and this is where they get to hang out. Down here also are where some of the original homesteads for this section of land uh, were originally built back in the early, early 1900s. Uh, this area of Wyoming wasn't homesteaded until the 1900s, which is sometimes hard to believe for people, but this area was almost the last pickings of the original Homestead Act. And people came in here, they homesteaded originally for 100 acres, and it was found that there was no way that anybody could survive on 100 acres, and that was bumped up to 600. 40 acres or one complete section uh, per homestead and that's where uh, these homesteads were actually founded were back in the early 1900s the uh, the homesteads really aren't that far away you can almost see another homestead uh, right up over this hill another building almost just like this one which was another family and eventually those two families married and put this piece of land together and uh, 100 years later uh, here we are So this is one of the oldest uh, windmills on the ranch. The brake had actually come off of it, which is a good thing that we came down and looked at it, and it was going pretty good. I managed to get the brake turned back on, and that stops the windmill uh, because we don't need it pumping water right now, and any wear and tear, of course, is never good. So we stopped the windmill, we put the brake on, and then uh, we'll be able to fire this back up in the summer when the cows need water down here, and this windmill will still be functioning, hopefully. So we'll be down working on it this summer and making sure that uh, everything's working okay and that the water is pumping. But this is one of the original windmills on the ranch. There are a few of them. Um, only two of them have actual windmills attached to them anymore. The rest have become regular, wind, like regular electric wells. But uh, it is kind of cool to see some of this history down here. Here we find our first road uh, that we ran into, and this we call a two-track uh, because that's basically all it is, is two tracks that make a road. Uh, it kind of reminds you of the old wagon wheel ruts from, uh, from back in the 1800s, but uh, this is the, uh, the only road here for a few miles until we get to a little bit uh, better, more improved road. back as here uh, which kind of makes it a little bit of a pain in the butt when you have to move hay out but uh, here, around here we pretty much take a hay field where we can get it so there are uh, there's a 80 acre hay field back that way that we cut and there's a few acres uh, up in here uh, as we come up on this rise that you can see that we cut including this over here we cut for hay up on that side of the hill we all cut for hay and then over the hill uh, there's another uh, 100 acres or so that's cut for hay. If you look way out there, you can see a little white house, and that is a neighbor clear over there. I don't even know if you can see it. I do still have service out here, though. Yellow.
No problem. No problem. Thank you. All right. Bye-bye. Phone still works. And actually, if I would have drove about another 100 feet, I probably wouldn't add service. So maybe I should drive faster. still in summer pasture these uh, water reservoirs will actually help us out with our water uh, requirements during summer for the cows they will uh, be able to drink water out of these reservoirs and all these reservoirs are actually just runoff there is no no river runs through it man this is uh, this is all runoff uh, from snowpack so we're lucky to have the water that we do I love driving down here uh, because, you know, it is summer pasture, but it, it does remind me of summer and it makes me, you know, long for the green grass and, and everything that we don't have quite yet, but it is still on the way. So we are just getting ready to cross the cattle guard, uh, bringing us out of summer pasture and into what we call our transition pastures, uh, where we have uh, about 1,000, 1,500 acres that the cows move through uh, in between the time that they calve and the time that they make it down here to summer pasture. So we're gonna take a look at that here in just a second, but first we gotta cross uh, a cattle guard. pasture we call the one-legged windmill pasture and I'll show you why here in just a second but this is the the last stop for the cows before they go on to summer pasture and sometimes it's even used as a holding pasture until we're able to finish haying on summer pasture because we can't put the cows down there while we're trying to wrap up hay so we get it done we move them up and then uh, we move the hay up and then we can move the cows down if that makes sense This is why we call it the one-legged windmill pasture, which is the one-legged windmill, the windmill that stands on a stilt. As we head out of the, uh, the one-legged windmill pasture, which is huge, extends way over in that direction, we're now crossing into what we call the heifer pasture. And the heifer pasture is an area that when we do keep back replacement heifers or we have replacement heifers that we bought from another rancher or farmer, this is where they usually spend their summer, is in this pasture. And this pasture can actually be bypassed by the cows by heading up and over and around in another field that's way over that way. So it's a, it's a handy little pasture to have and it's a good place for um, you know the heifers to breed or whatever we need to do down here. Um, the nice thing is too that it's, uh, it's small, it's contained, and uh, it's not too far away if we do have trouble. In between the heifer pasture and our home pasture is our hay fields. Now this is uh, just a, a fraction of the hay fields that we cut every year, but this is about 200 acres of hay field um, that's cut for food for the cows. Right now it may not look like much, but uh, we're hoping that within just a few months, 
we'll have plenty of grass grown here that we can harvest and feed the cows for an entire winter. These fields along with a whole bunch of other ones, but same problem. Home is where the heart is, and this is the home pasture uh, where all of the cows are living right now. These are all the pregnant cows that are gonna have a calf any day now. Um, I realize that, uh, and, and this is uh, part of the problem with doing these daily vlogs, and tons of people were more than happy enough to point out my mistake, is that uh, when I was talking in yesterday's vlog about uh, you know 283 days of gestation, the, uh, and I said the cows would have been due, I think I said on the 5th, it's actually the 9th is when the cows would be due after 283 days. Give or take five days is really not gonna make that much of a difference. To some people, it was just a chance for them to prove that I was wrong. But, uh, you know, the mistakes are made and, and uh, you know, we move on. But don't expect me to be perfect in everything. Come on, guys. While we're down here, we're just gonna take a quick drive through of the cows because it doesn't matter if we're five days or two weeks away from calving, we do have to really keep an eye on these cows. Any one could be the first one to have the calf of the season. And uh, I really don't want to leave her alone for that. I'd rather be there for it. You can tell the wind is a pain in the butt when the cow is hiding in the windbreak. The home pasture here is about 400 acres that uh, we utilize specific just, before, just up until branding. Um, they will stay here. They'll calve in this pasture. Uh, they're close enough to home that I can move them in if I have to. But uh, once we brand, then that's when they start their migration, working their way down. They bypass the hay fields by going through another field that's about a mile up this way. They'll actually circumvent the entire hay fields and the heifer pasture, Go all, unless I want them to go in the heifer pasture. They'll go all the way around. They'll move down into the one-legged windmill uh, pasture. And then, you know, we, we move them through these different pastures in uh, what is about as close to rotational grazing as we can get around here because once the cows eat the grass here, it's not going to grow back. We don't get enough rain. Our growing season isn't long enough. And it, it's a one and done type deal. It's the same reason we only get one cutting of hay each year. It's one and done. We get our one cutting, we get our one harvest, and we're done. And the harvest that the cows do is no different than the harvest that we do uh, in the tractors for haying season. The cows do it, we do it, we're done. We're moving on and moving on to the next pasture, which is exactly what the cows do. That's about it. We're currently uh, about a half a mile from the shop and we're going to head up over this hill and, and we'll be there before you know it. Uh, we're still waiting for our first calf. We're still, uh, we still got our fingers crossed that that's going to happen uh, safely and quickly and, and easily uh, for the cow and the calf, but we are hoping to be there. We're keeping an eye out for it and of course uh, uh, hoping that it's sooner than later. So. Uh, I hope you enjoyed our little trip across the ranch. Uh, we traveled about six and a half miles. It took us just over 45 minutes to do it. Of course, this video, I'll you know, squish it down and condense it and all that kind of good stuff, but uh, make it worth your while. But I hope it kind of gives you a, a little bit of a scope of the, uh, the, the size of the ranch and what we have to deal with and what we have to manage all by ourselves. Now, you might, you might still say, hey, it's not that much. It's not that big. But there's also fence line covering a lot of it. Miles and miles, 27 miles of fence, I do believe, something like that. So there's plenty of work to be done always around the ranch, and there's never a dull moment. So be sure to subscribe, like us on Facebook and Instagram. Go check out our website and uh, make yourself at home because you're going to be here for quite a while longer as we continue our 30 and 30, 30 vlogs in 30 days, and uh, maybe more. Stick around.